Hey everybody, in this topic I'm going to show you how we can accept some user input. Then I have a few exercises for us to work on. We'll work on Mad Libs, a program to calculate the area of a square, and a shopping cart program. How do we accept user input? Well, we do so within our console window down here. The same that we use for output. To accept some user input, we can use the input function. Within the set of parentheses, we can type a prompt to be displayed to the console window. Let's ask for somebody's name. Enter your name. When I run this program, our program is paused in the console window until we type in something and hit enter. I'll enter my name. You can enter in your own name. Hit enter. Uh, but nothing appears to happen. We've accepted user input, but we should probably store the input somewhere. How about inside of a variable? I'll assign my variable name equal to the input that we receive. Our input will be stored within this variable, and then we can use it for something. So let's print whatever our name is within a message. I'll use an F string. Hello, our variable name. Let's try this again. Enter your name. I'll type in my first name. Hit enter. Hello, bro. Let's ask for somebody's age this time. We'll create variable age. Set this equal to input. Then we'll need a prompt. Enter your age. Then we will print using an F string. You are our variable age years old. Enter your name. I'll type in my first name. Enter your age. I'll make up an age. Hello, bro. You are 21 years old. When we accept user input, the input is always of the string data type. What if I were to increase my variable age by 1? Age equals age plus 1. This is what would happen. Bro, 21. Uh, we have a type error. Can only concatenate strings, not integers, to strings. If I accept user input and I need to use it for any sort of math, I would want to typecast that input as either an integer or a float. Based on the previous lesson on typecasting, we could write age equals, I'll typecast my age, which is a string, into an integer. So type in your first name, an age, and that appears to work. Uh, however, I like to do this involving one line of code. In place of adding an additional line where we're typecasting, I'll take the user input and place this function within a typecast. I'll type int, then surround the input function with the set of parentheses. Then that only takes one line of code. So, bro, 21. There we go, that also works. Uh, if we were to typecast our input as a float, well then my input would be a floating point number. It has that decimal portion. So when you accept user input, it's always of the string data type. If you're going to use your input with any sort of math, you'll probably want to typecast it as either a float or an integer. And that's how to accept user input. Let's go over a few exercises. The first, we'll create a Mad Libs game. All right, everybody, for our first practice program, we're going to create a Mad Libs game. Mad Libs is where you have a story, but the user gets to submit nouns, verbs, and adjectives within your story. So let's think of a story. Feel free to come up with your own. I'll use f-strings. Today, I went to a... We'll insert an adjective here. An adjective is a quality of a thing. Zoo. So what kind of zoo? An expensive zoo, a cheap zoo, a dirty zoo, a clean zoo. That's an adjective. It's a quality of a noun. Our second line, let's say, is in an exhibit, I saw then a noun. A noun is a person, place, or thing. Our noun was then an adjective and a verb. A verb is an action. I would like two different adjectives. Let's rename this first adjective as adjective one. The second adjective will be adjective two. 
after our verb, I'll add ing. That means that this verb is current tense. It's currently happening. Print. This will be an F string. I was. Then let's add a third adjective. Adjective three. We just need to declare and assign these variables. We have adjective one. Our noun. Adjective two. Our verb. Then adjective three. We'll accept user input. Input. We'll ask the user to enter an adjective. Let's copy this line, add that to adjective two and adjective three. For noun, we'll input, enter a noun. Our verb will be enter a verb. All right, we're ready to run our Mad Libs game. An adjective describes a quality of a person, place, or thing. Like fast, slow. Uh, what about suspicious? Or I'll just say sus for short. Enter a noun. Mark Zuckerberg. A noun is a person, place, or thing. Enter an adjective. Berserk. Enter a verb. A verb is an action. How about screech? Enter an adjective. Amazed. All right, here's our story. Today, I went to a sus zoo. In an exhibit, I saw Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg was berserk and screeching. I was amazed. All right, that is our first exercise. I'd like to see what you wrote. Post your results in the comment section down below because I would like to read it. All right, let's move on to the second exercise. For this next exercise, we will calculate the area of a rectangle. We'll need two variables, length and width. We'll take length equal to, except some user input, enter the length of a rectangle. Then we'll need the width. Width, enter the width of a rectangle. We will take our area variable set this equal to length times width. Then let's display whatever the area is. The area is colon space. I'll insert our area variable. Depending on the unit of measurement, you can set this to inches, centimeters, or something else. I'll just say centimeters. I believe that's centimeters squared technically. Okay, let's try it. Uh, the length will be nine. The width is 15. Uh, we have a problem. Type error can't multiply sequence by non-integers of type string. What we're missing here is we need to typecast our user input as either a floating point number or an integer. We're using these variables in arithmetic equations. So let's typecast our length and our width as a floating point number. And let's try this again. Enter the length of a rectangle, nine, 15. The area is 135 centimeters squared. Hey, if this were a 3D rectangle, we could add height. Height equals, I'm going to copy all this. Enter the height of a rectangle. Volume equals length times width times height. The volume is our volume centimeters cubed technically 9 15 7 i'm just making up numbers here the volume is 945.0 centimeters cubed all right so that is the second exercise we have calculated well i guess both the area of a rectangle and the volume of a three-dimensional rectangle Okay, we have one more exercise, a shopping cart program. We have three variables, item, a price of the item, then a quantity. 
we'll ask the user what item they're buying. Input, what item would you like to buy? Then a price, input, what is the price? Then a quantity, input, how many would you like? If we're working with a string, we don't need to do any typecasting. A price, with a price, that could include a decimal. We should typecast our input as a floating point number. I'll surround our input with a typecast to a float. And with a quantity, those are typically integers, they're whole numbers. I'll typecast our input as an integer. So surround our input with an int cast. Then we can do some calculations. Total equals our price multiplied by our quantity. Then we'll display a message to the user. Print, we'll use an F string. You have bought our quantity variable times whatever the item is that we're trying to buy. Then I'll add slash s because they might buy more than one item. Then we'll display the total. Your total is colon space, then our total. Uh, I should probably precede the total with some currency, maybe a dollar sign. Okay, let's run this program. What item would you like to buy? I would like to buy a pizza. What is the price? Maybe a pizza is $4.99. How many would you like to buy? I would like to buy nine pizzas. All right, here's the total, $44.91. We can truncate everything up to two decimal places. And here's how. There is a built-in round function. I'm going to surround our total within a round function. Then after our variable, I'll add comma, then the amount of decimal places to round two. Let's try this again. What item would you like to buy? A pizza, the price is $4.99. How many would you like to buy? I'd like nine pizzas. Your total is $44.91. Uh, like I said, to truncate everything after two decimal places, you could use the built-in round function, then set the amount of decimal places you would like to round to. All right, everybody, that is the third exercise. We have made a small shopping cart program.